Hello everybody, I'm Herman Stern from Obermatt and we are picking stocks today. But this time we're going to discuss them. I've gathered a couple of friends who are interested in stock investing. I have here Joel, Sebastian and Anand. Hello, hi. I'm Anand. I'm basically from India and I am here in Switzerland for the past uh, four years now. And um, today I'm here to invest about, uh, discuss about stocks. I have been investing a little bit in Indian markets over the past couple of years, but I am looking forward to make my exposure in a Swiss market and today would be interesting to see what other people think about uh, the stocks I choose in Switzerland. I'm Joelle, I'm Swiss, I work as a project manager in an AI startup. And I'm here because, yeah, I feel like it's an interesting topic. I would like to know more about investments and invest myself and not, be, not rely on anybody to do that for me. Hi, my name is Sebastian, I'm 28, 28 years old. Um, I'm German, I just moved to Switzerland. I'm working here in the real estate industry and I'm not very much familiar with stock investing or stock picking, so this is why I joined Overmutt and uh, try to get new, experience, new experiences and uh, learn some, some stuff. Good, what I did today was something different. I looked at my own portfolio instead of searching for stocks because I have a couple of stocks where I just don't have enough money invested. Some of them I got as a spin out and then it was just a small amount and some just dropped in value so dramatically that it's not worth looking at them anymore. The two stocks that, are, that I would like to look at is G4S, this is a security company in the UK, and Siemens Gamesa, this is a wind turbine company in Spain. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So uh, like this week I was uh, thinking to choose stock basically in Switzerland. So I selected two different industries, one is real estate. It's uh, always interesting and uh, it has been increasing in value for over the last couple of decades. And uh, the second one is apparel and accessory industry. So in the first real estate sector, I came up with uh, this stock called Intershop. It's like a small uh, company, but they have amazing portfolio of uh, uh, like different lands. They buy different area and then they lease out for businesses. Uh, so. I, that seems super interesting to me. And then the second stock I'm uh, looking is uh, Richimont. So they make uh, apparel and uh, accessories, uh, especially they focus on the luxury brand. So they have a lot of brands spanned across the globe. So I think it's quite diverse and super interesting stock as well. And it's also one of the blue chip company of Switzerland. Yeah, we're all aware of them. <laughs> Joel? Um. So for me, I just had two kind of criteria that I wanted to see if I can actually work within them. One was um, sustainable, like a sustainable company, mm -hmm. especially environmentally. And the other one was, um, yeah, empowering women, or let's say what you turned up with, um, family friendly. So I looked into that and I came up with um, Alstom, which is in the transport area, so mostly um, public transportation. And the other one is Aviva, which is a French um, insurance company. Mm -hmm. So these are the two I picked. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, last um, So I also started out by using just the Overmat tool and the filter because I didn't have much of a press preference, but I wanted to get into an area where I'm not too familiar with, but interested in so I just use the filter for utilities and with that I got a list of stocks and then I actually checked further um, like the industry they are in and because I'm quite interested in the power producers and stuff like that I came up with Uniper with a, it's a German company and they um, actually do electrical power natural gas so this kind of thing and um, well, they're, they're quite large already, so I felt like this might be a good pick to, to start out with and have a further look. Okay. And the other stock I picked was in the con construction material. 
um, and they are actually the leaders for fireproof products and systems. So this, I just found this product super interesting. Mm -hmm. They actually create systems for steel producers, for example. So they actually build um, systems that are fireproofed up to over a thousand um, Celsius. So this is why I picked this company and want to have a further look if this is like sustainable and so, could be. Yeah. So which one is it? Okay. <laughs> now we're all interested. <laughs> um, the RHI Magnesitia. Where is it based? It's actually based in Austria and Netherlands. They have like two. Okay. Two, two Interesting. Offices. Never heard of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's take a look at that. <laughs> So, as I discussed before, I chose uh, two different stocks. One from one is Intershop for, in real estate, and the other one is uh, Richemont, for, which is an uh, accessories company. So, basically, um, I choose uh, real estate services, and basically, Intershop is the first one that popped up and which looks fantastic. So uh, the main reason I choose is uh, they do uh, uh, real estate stuff. So the f first thing is um, they do commercial real estate, so which is uh, uh, to lend out to different companies and um, other uh, uh, like common usages. And then they give a dividend yield of 4.65% over the last five years. So, and for example, they have wide range of portfolio, ranging from uh, buildings, corporate offices, and uh, parking areas. So, I think, uh, and they are diversified across entire Switzerland. And they own the property, huh? This they is, they own yeah. the property, and okay, they because lease they used it. to be Intershop used to be a shop, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, had, they had all these electronic shops, you know, in, exactly. the, in the 90s. And, exactly, exactly. And nowadays they're mostly an inter, a real estate company. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. They, they transformed themselves uh, to the real estate company. And interestingly, they are the oldest real estate company listed in the market. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's a Swiss company, you said? Or? Yeah, it's a Swiss company and uh, it has properties m only in Switzerland, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, Have no. you looked at the open mode ranks? Uh, yeah, so that's where I came up from, and it looks fantastic. So the combined rank is 100, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, the value rank is 55, uh, which is um, decently good at the current uh, market valuation. And um, yeah, they are going quite a lot in the recent days. As I said, I picked Alstom and Aviva, and since Aviva is an insurance company and nobody really likes insurances, so I decided to go with Alstom. Oh, but insurance is interesting as well. <laughs> but I'm just like having a private crisis with my insurance, so I was like, nah, I don't need insurance right now. <laughs> so I went with um, public transportation. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, since I also have a special connection to Paris and they also do the DGV and I decided, okay, that sounds cool. Um, was also one of the top um, Obermatt ranks when I looked for climate protection stocks. So this one, unfortunately, is not um, in the family friendly category, but you can't have everything. There are only a few there. <laughs> they still have to do a lot more for Yeah, <laughs> they do, right? <laughs> yeah, and it looked pretty good. So, I mean, I don't know that much about it. So everything was in green and I thought, okay, that's probably good. Um, I checked it out a bit. For example, I went on Yahoo Finance mm -hmm. and um, checked out their ranking there. Um, which is funny because it's different to the Google ranking, like the Google graph and everything. So I'm kind of a bit confused now because in Google it looks really good, like um, stable, sort of stable rise of the stock. What is it exactly that you see there? This it doesn't one? look good. Oh, I'll just this one the is price kind chart. Of, yeah, yeah, it kind of looks good, right? Mm -hmm. Over the last five years. And then right. if you go here to Yahoo Finance, it kind of looks differently over it's the probably last, not five, the last years. five years. Yeah, yeah, I think. yeah it is. I, I think... Uh, no, it's just June 19th, yeah. it's, it's, it's just it's one September oh, okay. 1st. So I think they Why? don't have five years of okay. data. Mm -hmm. They don't have five years of data. Yeah. 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 Okay. I looked at the dividends as well, and they have like 14.77%, which seems Incredible. to be a lot, yeah. right? 
They also have very good dividend ranks, you know, at, at mm -hmm. Overmont. If you look at that, they have a dividend rank of 98 when you go to, the, to their page on Overmont, which so means they have more, you know, they have more dividends than, than all their peers. Mm -hmm. It's really good, you know. Also really high profits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's surprising that they're so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's surprising. Because this is, you know, dividends right now is really looked for, you know. Mm. A lot of people want yeah. high dividends because then at least they get something for their yeah. investments. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Anything? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, definitely good. So they are number one in America, two in Pacific, Asia Pacific, and then um, again two in Africa and the third place in Europe. Mm. So basically they cover almost the entire yeah. world. Well, the stock I want to further investigate is obviously the RHI Magnesita, okay. <laughs> um, which was the company that produces fireproofed systems and products. Um, just the product itself is so interesting to me because I feel if they are the leader for this kind of product, they will not have much of, of a competition. So I feel like these products are probably quite safe or the company is going to be quite safe with their pool of clients. Um, it's, um, it's not that small of a company, so I just I googled a little bit, googled around and to see um, what the company is like, and they have already 14,000 employees, but okay, only it, yeah. generate a refin revenue of 8 billion. I mean, if I compare the employees, the, the number of employees to other companies with this amount of employees, they usually have a higher revenue. Mm -hmm. um, so this was, struck me as kind of odd, but I'm not sure if this is necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I, I went also on, on Yahoo Finance and I looked at the stock price, which was extremely high. I mean, it was like 3,600 mm -hmm. per stock. So I'm, I'm not sure why they would do that because as a smaller investor, I would rather buy like a smaller share, like a smaller amount. Yeah. But then again, I, when I look at the Overmatt ranks, like in total, there's not much to complain about, especially in the year of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, that was all pretty, pretty green, pretty good. I mean, the years before, they sometimes had like, for the PE ratio, for example, in year 18, they only had six. But I assume they did some um, investments or some restructuring, you know, to, to accept some losses, but improve them significantly in the following year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so this is like the company I, I, I really enjoyed, also just because of the product, but also because it fits well with the ranking from Overman. They are like scattered across the globe. In yeah, that's, that's also continent. what I liked about it, that they're globally present, so mm -hmm. they can mm -hmm. diversify with their customers. So yeah, I exactly. feel like that, that is a rather safe bet to me, if they, only, if they don't just focus on a smaller local market. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, uh, uh. I looked also at the analyst ratings, there are lots of news on buy ratings right mm -hmm. now for the company. Yeah. Okay. I think there's it's a good product, it's an industrial company, large enough, you know. Yeah. Good price. Makes sense. Okay. You have, you have a question, Joelle? Um, yeah. So the other company I looked at, Aviva, um, again, when I looked at the Google um, overview, I have a stock price or a share price for like, let's say 11 US dollars. Mm -hmm. But when I go on Yahoo, it's like 421 yeah. something. Yeah, I think it's because it is from a London Stock Exchange and the other one is from uh, US? Yeah, could be. Yeah, and, it could be. From and you know what? And in, the, in London, they list the stock prices not in pounds, they list it in pound cents. Um, but the stock price is actually not that important. Exactly. You know, uh -huh. uh, yeah. No matter where you buy it at what price, you know, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a market price for the stock. You mm -hmm. can't do much wrong. Yeah. It's not that you get it someplace cheaper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But most companies have decided to have enough stocks outstanding so that they have prices that you mm. can afford mm -hmm. with a couple of hundred or even a couple of thousand mm. Mm. francs. It was just such a, diff such a big difference that I was really like, okay, what's, mm -hmm. what's going on? But, but can you yeah. choose like different stock exchanges to, to get different prices? 
Yeah, you can actually use different stock exchanges, and this is a really interesting question. First, I mean, when you look at the prices, the safest way is to go to your broker and look mm -hmm. what the prices is there, mm -hmm. because then you don't have to worry. This is, mm -hmm. this is information with no reliability. But when you go to your broker, he has to quote you the price that you actually get, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or something in the area that you mm -hmm. get there. You can still decide where to buy the stock if they're listed in different stock exchanges. And it's a little bit like going to the market if you buy fruits or vegetables. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter where you buy them. I mean, there, of course, they're all different, but if you buy a certain product, it doesn't matter if you buy it in shop one or two. You know, the only difference really is that you get it there and maybe they charge you, you know, in terms of stock prices, they charge you a lower transaction fee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you will never get the price advantage on the stock on a certain exchange. Or in most cases, you will not get it mm -hmm. because there would be arbitrage. There would be professionals would mm -hmm. go and would do it yeah. before you can profit from it. So you, the only thing I do is when I get a stock, uh, let's say in the US, you know that you know is also listed in Switzerland. I buy it in the US because it's cheaper in the mm -hmm. US than in Switzerland. Yeah. But we talk about very little amounts. Okay. I may not even worry about that. You know, okay. you talk about ten or twenty francs and you make an investment maybe one or two thousand and then you know it doesn't really matter that much yeah I'm, I'm just thinking about my case here with the three and a half thousand yeah there um, you have but that problem yeah. you have on any exchange from time to time companies rethink their cost price mm -hmm. and then they just uh, double the number of shares mm -hmm. and then their price becomes half yeah split uh, shares yeah and uh, you will end up getting another yeah. share at a half, half price mm -hmm. so but apart from that, the stock price doesn't make okay. uh, significant sense. But uh, what's interesting is there is something called book value of the share. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in Obermatt, you can also look at price to book uh, ratio, I guess. Mm -hmm. so, so this is an interesting ratio where it says um, how much. So the book value is sort of, you can say, if the company liquidate today, they sell everything they own. Mm -hmm. What is the value of the company? And then the price is what you're paying. So this ratio gives you a sense of how expensive you are buying the company. So okay. in Obermatt, if it is less, it means you are paying a bit more mm -hmm. amount for what you are buying. Good. Okay, then I think it's, um, it becomes uh, my turn <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, to uh, tell you what I found. And, you know, honestly, I must say, I, I think the stocks you found are much better than what I found. <laughs> <laughs> what I have currently in my portfolio, maybe I make the decision to sell uh, these stocks. Um, and maybe I do that a little bit differently these times, because I looked at uh, the Siemens Gamesa. I looked at G4S, and I also actually looked at Seekonomy. And I don't like any of those companies, except maybe with Siemens Gamesa. Mm -hmm. This is the only stock that, you know, could actually be interesting. Uh, uh, the first thing what I had to do is because, it, is it Siemens or another company? <laughs> I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. I had to find out how they come to the name of Siemens, Gamesa. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a company created from a division of Siemens mm -hmm. that did wind turbines, wind turbines, and the Spanish wind turbine company. Mm -hmm. And they're now a really a huge player of wind tur turbines. And they span off, I think, um, three or four years ago and, and became a, a separate company. I then googled the company and I found that uh, UBS as well as um, a Bank of America has actually a buy rating. I did that because the Obermott ranks are a little bit mixed, you know. They, they have now a, a value rank which is a little bit below average, mm -hmm. but that doesn't really it's not really a problem for a company where a lot, is, a lot of the business in, is in the future. You know, then sometimes you actually really pay more for, mm -hmm. for the size of the company. But I wanted then to know what other people say and you know that there the news are actually quite good. The thing that I ask myself is, I'm a little bit skeptical about, about wind turbines in general because mm -hmm. I think they, they actually pollute the landscape. <laughs> you know, <it's> basically <laughs> renewable energy um, that is best on offshore so that you don't see it uh, or the birds don't fly into it. Um, having said that, I, I think renewable energy is a really hot topic. And uh, before I he heard, heard what you said, I thought, you know, I'm going to actually buy more shares of Gamesa because, of, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's a good stock. It uh, has, has an interesting history of an entrepreneur in Spain of 
Germany, you know, German manufacturing engineering. I think that's really good. And they have fantastic growth with a rank of 100, pretty safely financed with 67, over, so above mm -hmm. average safe. So I thought this, this, is, this is a good, a good reason to buy. What I don't agree or what I don't like, I would say, like is the right term, is that they are just uh, in the market for one year. So they have a, like... Actually, not, not really. They're in the stock market for one year. But when you yeah, go to Wikipedia, exactly. they say they started in 1976. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it really is, it is too large. It's a division and it's a large company that merged together to, mm -hmm. to, to become bigger. Yeah, they have 8 billion of market cap, which is uh, not bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, don't you think about the valuation? So, for example, uh, here they got a score of 46, but still they are trading at a PE ratio of about 75. Yeah, but that's, that's kind of the advantage of the Obermott rank because it puts it into perspective of, of other wind turbine companies. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, this is a market with a big future. And that's why with a rank of 46, it's, uh, it's more or less average. The thing mm -hmm. that takes it down is really the dividend yield because they, they don't pay dividend for some yeah, reason. No dividends. Now, I don't think that's a big problem because if you have a good company, you know, Microsoft was famous for not paying mm -hmm. dividends for 20 years. I mean, if you have a good company and you know what to do with the money, I think it's actually a good sign. Yeah, and I'm actually, sometimes a little bit skeptical when yeah, there's yeah. companies with big dividends and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, does, doesn't management know what to do with the money? You yeah. know? That's sometimes what, what, what I'm wondering. Should I invest in a company that pays me a lot of dividends or should I just go with one that doesn't pay dividends and expect like uh, share appreciation? Yeah, it's, uh, it's because both, in the end, <laughs> if you pay dividends, it's just you know the share price drops at the day when they pay dividends. So in the end, it's. I think for a company like Intershop that Anand was looking at, uh, where there's not a lot of growth to be expected, mm -hmm. it makes sense to look at the dividends. Yeah. In a company like you know a wind energy company where you know they have to grow and they have to capture market share, there it's really not that important. Okay. You know when it's. Mm -hmm. you know, the company really has a lot of growth. They cannot pay out that much. They need to cash, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. So we've discussed a few things. Uh, Anand, you found a real estate company with a high dividend mm -hmm. and a low, um, actually a very high book, book value versus exactly. the market value. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and Shoal, you found a company that uh, produces public transport systems that has good Obermott ranks. Was and there anything I missed? Yeah, very high dividend, 14.75. Very dividends, high dividends as well. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. And uh, Sebastian, uh, you found uh, an Austrian company, kind of high tech, fire. Yeah, exactly. Super expensive. Which, yeah, which is kind of expensive, <laughs> but has a very unique product, I, I, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, and is still globally present, has a high growth. Okay. And I have a little bit something similar, the wind mm -hmm. turbine company with very low dividends. Mm -hmm. But actually, you know, when you look at the value ranks, they seem not as bad as they should be for a company with such an interesting future. That's what I think. So the big question is, what should we do now? Um, does anybody want to take a stand, what they want to do now after this discussion? Well, I can definitely take a stand. So I'm okay. definitely going to buy shares from Alstom. Mm -hmm. Don't know yet how many, but what I've read um, convinced me. So mm -hmm. I really like that. And yeah, I'll think about what you presented. I'm not sure yet, all of you. Yeah, but I noted a few points down, so there I'm not as confident yet. <laughs> okay, sure. so Especially the super expensive one, maybe. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> a bit I, later. <laughs> to be honest, I feel like this is a, a really interesting and good stock okay. it's just that i don't want to have a too big of a position when starting out yeah. mm -hmm. so one thing to remember though you're going to invest for a long time exactly yeah, and you mm -hmm. have to think about what you want to invest in the next let's say 12 to 24 months mm -hmm. and then look at it you know from that perspective yeah if you decide that you're going to only invest ten thousand over the next one year or mm -hmm. two then it's too much. Mm -hmm. If you decide oh, I'm going to invest fifty thousand anyway, you could probably, you know, take a dive and yeah. try. <laughs> try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I think I I will put a hold on it. Okay. I will keep monitoring it, 
and see if, if good news keep coming and then I, I might I might try it out mm -hmm. and concerning your stocks um, well, real estate is, is, to be honest, not really my thing, so I, I would I would skip that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the the Alstom mm -hmm. um, sounded actually really interesting. And and yours, <laughs> to be to be honest, it seems like a yeah, like like a yeah, a bit, bit on the future. Bit, <laughs> yeah, a bit yeah yeah, a bit a bit more on the future side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Could be a little bit risky, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, if they have a hard year coming up, probably just the wind doesn't blow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are in a very bad state because they are not able to sustain themselves mm -hmm. at the given time. I, I must say, when I have to now make my decision, I already own that stock, mm -hmm. Siemens Camesa, and I just don't feel that comfortable. I think from the discussion today, I found your stock really interesting because it has that safety, you know, margin, margin in there. Mm -hmm. I would probably buy this Intershop. I would probably buy that. Um, and regarding Siemens Gamesa, I'm probably just going to wait for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Still, it's I already have the stock. Mm -hmm. What about you? Yeah, for me, uh, uh, like always, I'm a fan of good stocks in general. Um, but at the given market scenario, where like 10 years of amazing experience for the investor, I think we are going to have a bit hard time in the future. Mm -hmm. So I think at this moment, I'm thinking of building more safety margin. It's also because I have a lot of uh, good stocks in my portfolio and I have a mm -hmm. lot of hopes for the future. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I want to make my portfolio a bit more stable. And that's one of the reasons I was looking in the real estate sector. And the another reason is uh, for diversification. I don't have any exposure to real estate. Mm -hmm. Buying a house in Switzerland is almost mm -hmm. impossible at the current stage. I, I was thinking also to leverage my portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, uh, at, uh, this company, Intershop, comes with a good deal, they make leverage on behalf of me. Uh, so I buy one stock of them and then they make 80% of extra money and mm -hmm. then they invest in real estate. So yeah, I'm, think, I'm thinking more to buy uh, Intershop, converging towards that. But my only concern there as well is the valuation. So also the Swiss real estate valuation has been growing quite a lot in the not quite a lot, sta quite stable in the recent mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. uh, so I hope uh, it will continue to be stable. But with sa that said, I think I will choose the safety stock, which mm -hmm. is Intershop. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Uh, so I think it's time to wrap up. <laughs> Thank you very much for um, joining me here to discuss this. I, I, I saw a lot of really interesting stocks, um, again, that I wasn't aware of. And I've been doing this now for four years. and. I have 70 stocks in my portfolio, but these didn't come up. Um, I found that really interesting. Mm -hmm. I would like to say thank you. Thank you, Sebastian, mm -hmm. Joel, Anand, to be with me. And let's hope we can continue that soon again. Thank you very much for joining us. And maybe you want to set up your own roundtable because discussing the stocks with your friends, friends really helps you make better decisions. You have now heard our decisions. I wish you good luck with your investment decisions.